Hello and welcome to the Sussex Smuggler. I'm Captain James Bollinger and today what we've got is an absolute treat. Well, I certainly hope it's a treat for you. Um, we're having a look uh, at, uh, well, as you probably know, I've been doing some coverage on the uh, Amsterdam VOC wreck that was beached down at uh, Balderith in 1749 on the 26th of January. So uh, I thought I'd give this a bit of a follow-up. Um, reasons are, if you've watched the video at the wreck, it, um, although despite being a very hot and sunny kind of day, uh, I don't know kind of how it, but it was, uh, a lot of wind uh, was coming across there from the east and cutting out a lot of the commentary that I was trying to provide uh, for the video. Uh, but before we get on to that, I'd like to apologise for the podcast that I've been putting up on Irish folklore. Now, they've uploaded, to my knowledge, um, uh, OK. And just like today, being live, uh, anything can go wrong, of course. And when I played them back on YouTube, um, although despite passing all their editing uh, stress, hexes of having all the features coming out, like the, uh, the intro and the music and that, uh that hasn't happened for some reason so i can only lie the blame with myself i'm afraid but uh, it might be something we revisit in the future but the sound quality is there and the stories are brilliant um by the way i'm looking at some sussex folklore now i've got a terrific book uh, that i'm having a read of at the moment that, uh, that has provided a lot of eye openers but um yeah so I've, anyway getting back to today this uh, i thought i'd try something different i've actually got my um vlogging camera up and running and connected to, to for a better picture quality uh and and sound as well so hopefully this will come out all right what i'm proposing to do today uh is, is and anything can go wrong um it is live after all and if you see me reaching forward it's to put banners and slides and photos up for you to have a look at um yeah so i, I thought i'd try a different angle um with with this um my vlogging camera doubles up as a, a webcam as well which is terrific hopefully i've been i have been experimenting with it um only only just today and found that don't leave it on the auto focus is key um so look i mean i've got a brew you get yourself a drink get uh, relaxed and see what we can do if you want to um leave comments or questions or observations i mean i I don't always get everything correct. I'm only human like everybody else. And but if you've got a comment or a correction, please supply it. Um, and of course, supply it in a nice way and provide your source as well, which is important. Because uh, to, more, more often than not, people will say, well, you got that wrong. But they, they just leave it at that. They don't say, well, this is where, this is my reading into it. Um, or this is the video that said something different or whatever. But please do. That would be uh, helpful uh, because we're all here to learn and we're all here to find out. Uh, and it's important, above all, that um, that uh, these, these local historic stories are kept very much alive and are documented on places um, like, like my blog, the sussexsmuggler.co.uk, and on YouTube so that future generations can look back at this and work on. Uh, what we found at the time so um anyway as i say get yourself a drink this is to wet me whistle so excuse me oh lovely so today's live show as i said is about the amsterdam voc um and it was completed in amsterdam by the um dutch east indies company in 1748 and um the idea, the design of her and the fleet and her sister ships was uh, to, to uh, sail out to her colonies in uh, 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 Java, today's Java, uh, and stop at the Cape, drop troops and supplies off and then go on to the East Indies, Java and uh, trade with the, with the, uh, the local economy there. And she'd be carrying all sorts of materials from bricks, uh, guns, coins, silver, gold. Soldiers were obviously precious. 
to protect the colonies that, that were owned by the Dutch East India Company. And uh, it was it also carried some passengers as well, I believe. Yeah, to, uh, with a display displacement of 1,100 tonnes. So that gives you an idea of uh, the kind of cargo it could carry. I mean, displacement is an interesting debate within itself, as I've as I've looked into it, it's the amount of water that is displaced by the the vessel when it's afloat, and it also gives you an idea of how much it um, can carry. So there we have the Amsterdam VOC, VOC standing for the Dutch translation of uh, the Dutch East Indies Company or East India Company. Um, so this great, and you've got to understand that it, she was a great statement for the company and for Holland, who were masters of the sea at the time. Uh, and I think I mentioned earlier, if I haven't, she was a mirror ship. So at the time of her leaving um, Amsterdam, especially Texel Island, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, there'd be one leaving Java uh, and they would cross and mirror each other. Obviously the one leaving Amsterdam uh, would be carrying the, the finances the one leaving java would be carrying the cargo so they'd pass at some point I, i'm not quite sure exactly at what point but they would certainly pass they would mirror each other that was the plan behind it maybe they passed each other on route i don't know that was a design um or they met at cape town i don't know i'd have to read into that i don't honestly know so if you've got a comment to make on that i'd probably appreciate it and any good books that you can get on the East India Company, I'm very interested in uh, to have a read of as well, uh, because they're quite intriguing. I know there's a YouTube uh, series about the Batavia, which is an earlier ship that ran, ran aground on the coral outside Australia. Very interesting documentary by Defragged History on YouTube, and I believe they're on Twitter as well. But anyway, getting returning back to the uh, Amsterdam VOC. So she was she was completed in 1748. Um, she was captained by a 33 year old Captain Wilhelm Klump, uh, who is a resident of Amsterdam, and she was complete, completed in Amsterdam. From what I can, what I've read. Oh, by the way, what I've read here it is here. Let me just get rid of the banner off the screen for now. Should hide that and we'll put that one on just for good faith. Um, yeah, here, here's the book here. I'll put the, um, uh, the, the the information of the book. It's Peter Marsden's The Wreck of the Amsterdam. And it's a great book, terrific read, really easy to read. Lots of illustrations, photographs, maps, and, uh, uh, and, and very relevant material uh, in there. And I said it's an easy read, very interesting. And it isn't just about the wreck of the, of the Amsterdam. It's about the story behind it, the people, um, and the, uh, what happened. Because it, it, there's, there's a misconception around the state of the crew. Uh, but we'll get into that a bit later on and if i forget leave a comment please uh so yeah, what i've got if you see me leaning forward you'll see that i'm reaching for something here and that'll be the banner and hopefully there might be some prompts on there that will help me remember uh, along the way but of course it's live so anything can go wrong can't it or go right it might go better than what i think um so yeah it, it, it's a it's a terrific story um so in 1748, she pulled off with a skeleton crew from Amsterdam itself and then moved to Texel Island where she got loaded up uh, with cargo and crew, uh, which were ferried out to her. Uh, Clump uh, joined his ship, I believe, is at Texel Island because they ferry, ferry a lot of the most of them out there. Um, now, I understand that uh, there was a, some sort of press gang arrangement by the East India Company. I believe they were called crimps. And a lot of the crew were kept, and I use the word kept because that's what I read, kept in attics above houses in Amsterdam 
in, in squalid conditions. Uh, and I, from what I read, and if I've understand it, understood it correctly from Marsden's book, that they, they, they'd have their sanitary up there with them as well, and they were undernourished, and they were the, what were the dregs of society from Amsterdam, and it was desperate. They were desperate people that, that um, signed up um, to crew these ships. And you'd sign up for three years, uh, you'd get a pittance of pay, but, but at least you'd get, I say fed, uh, but you'd get a, a lot of maggot-ridden food and biscuits on board. So it, it shows that uh, it, it was a way of working, I suppose, as a floating workhouse, if you like, at the time. So a lot of them were ferried out to the ship. They were already malnourished. Um, probably with drink problems and uh, all, all, all the nastiness of society that still obviously without trying to get too political uh, exists today. So that would, they were all moved out there in November 1748. So as the story goes, they, they weighed anchor, set off from Texel Island. Uh, they hit a storm in the November out in the North Sea and ended up grounded back on the other side of Texel Island. Uh, Clump managed to get refloated again, and then bang, the same happened again with a different storm. Um, now, this really made matters worse because it, they, they spent Christmas on board the ship with the Amsterdam right through to January with, with, with the city in, in view of where they were. Um, so that must have got morale really down. So he had to spend Christmas um, on on board the uh, ship. Now, it was fine for the three passengers and the officers because they had their cabins. Uh, so it was probably a bit of a better lot for them. But the crew, um, and there was something like uh, 200, 203 crew, and soldiers on top of that were in squalid conditions and because the amsterdam was carrying so much cargo they it was understood that they they actually sectioned off a lot of the crew's quarters so they were all crammed in with no privacy with their sanitary as well all around them uh and uh with with and they'd still have to carry on with their ship's duties um uh, throughout this period. So, story goes, excuse me. The story goes that he managed, Clump and the crew managed to get the ship refloated in January. And they would sail with a fleet, I believe, of five ships, a total of five ships. And they were on their way. So the Amsterdam is believed uh, to have overtaken and outran a lot of the the fleet uh it's gone past the uh the the, the downs at deal the goodwin sands she was sighted there that's how apparently they kept ships news up to date through local observations obviously passed back through lloyds of london and the voc would have had their own representatives in london to see this news news was then passed back to um amsterdam and uh and regularly updated um uh, with the officers families and uh, insurers and the company directors all commercial uh, i can assure you so she, she she sailed on and uh then clump hit another storm so what he what they thought uh, the experts thought he tried to do was actually make a sprint for portsmouth for for, for harbridge and any repairs that potentially might um to, to have to be undertaken so um he couldn't make portsmouth he got his charts out and looked at the voc charts which told him that um that, that pevensey bay was a safe haven so he tried to hide uh, behind the cliffs in pevensey bay uh and of course she's bouncing up and down he thought oh, i'll just ride this out for a day or two so he dropped anchor in pevensey bay uh and the storm went on and on and on for 10 days i believe and uh what happened was out there is that i think people would be fair to say were, 
were scared out of their wits. The storm must have been awful. And I think it's probably one of the worst recorded ever. Um, so the with her anchorage and the, and the movement of the ship, she's been, probably only described as a bit like a, a rag doll being thrown away, th thrown ar around in the sea. So she's hit the seabed and lost her rudder. So she has no direction, no control. She hasn't furled any sails. Uh, and it's not looking good. So on the 25th, Clump must have gone to bed, a worried man. And if he slept at all, uh, he's, had, he's got problems. He knows he's got problems. He can't move the ship. He can't steer it. So it's thought that the crew mutineered. Now on the excavation, uh, Marsden, who wrote the book, he actually carried out the excavation as well with a, a couple of hundred other people, found uh, some VOC flattened musket balls. And he concluded that, um, it, that there was quite possibly a mutiny on board. And if you think about it with the conditions of the storm, the bad luck that they'd had, um, and uh, of course the sanitary uh, the, 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 the conditions that they were living in on board was probably enough to bring everything to breaking point. So we think what they did was um, basically threaten or, or mutinied on board. So Clump then agreed, I've got to beach the ship. And it's thought, excuse me a minute, that uh, after, the sh after the Amsterdam hit the seabed with its rudder, that they built a temporary rudder because um, he skillfully uh, then sails the ship. And bearing in mind, most of the crew may not have been cooperating with him. Uh, so we don't know how, how he did it, but he's definitely done it. He's done the, uh, he's put the bow in first uh, onto Baltharite Beach. So he's come out of Pevensey Bay somehow, probably with the wind. A limited series of runner and he's come along. Now he would probably know anything about all the right beach when he was going into sand, shingle, mud. There was, was a dash for hope. In his mind, he could have been able to face the mutiny. He was in a, a dreadful storm. He had to save the ship. He had to save his car. There was a lot of silver on board. There were three prominent passengers on board as well. That was his dilemma. So off he went, I said off he went, this is probably the kind of stadium, but off he went. And he managed to get the ship steered on the small line beach, bow first, so that's the front, the bow spirit, the lines here, the little green wall, the extra lines here, the simple, the very simple of the VAC, VAC, onto the beach. Now all that ship ever, ever sort of comes into play, he was a local landowner around all the ways. All right. Now the same letters would have been built at the time until 1835. So Hastings was very much a, a fishing village. Uh, and with, uh, with, with John Collier, the uh, Slayer General, I mean, was, he was a busy chasing of all kinds of scamming smokers. So the captain managed to beach the ship, bang on to the all right, but he fell off those front of him. The right, that's it, was safe. Now, what they did was they, they got the, uh, all, all the precious cargo was in Clark's cabin in silver. But nobody was allowed to leave the ship. So if you were officers, himself and crew, um, and I believe there was a negotiation of extra pain for the crew of something like 10% of the value of um, the, 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 the silver. But most of the cases off. Uh, and guarded it on the beach. Uh, that's one of the same in the book. Uh, no one was allowed to leave. Uh, now, Lord well, Evers sure. Ever Eversfield turned up and described the arrival of the Amsterdam as something like a, a floating tavern that had arrived because all he could hear was a lot of drunken singing going on, probably celebration, to be fair, of the crew who. who who took part in the mutiny, opened up all the alcohol that they could find, the gin that was being carried, 
in sea chests uh, and and they were all getting intoxicated on on that um, so they were having a right old time on it um, I think Clump used that as an opportunity to get what precious cargo he could off now the Amsterdam uh, at the moment um, stands at roughly about eight to ten feet in height and and that's at the moment so and that's without its forecastle quarter deck boot deck uh, which were burnt destroyed in a in a very primitive salvage operation by the, the dutch east india company at the time try and get into the hole they burnt them off and that, that happened much later on in 1749 um so uh, you're probably looking at it's probably much taller back then i wouldn't like to say what it was but at the moment with it being sunk into the beaches it's about eight to ten foot tall so you had to hoist all this all these sea chests over with this precious cargo on and then get it guarded uh to which he at some point liaised with the town mayor of hastings and said this is my problem um now the, the town before that was aware that the, the the amsterdam was in pevensey bay because a, a shall we say a fishing boat which may have doubled up as a smuggling vessel went out to it and asked offered its its help and clump before beaching the amsterdam said no but it got so much and obviously the mutiny and the storm he fired the, the cannons off in distress uh, because i believe the 26th of january at the time was a sunday and uh, in i think it was saint clement's church in hastings they heard um the cannons going off uh, so they all made for the beach the mayor included and there was the amsterdam sat there um so the mayor sent for the army uh, which was slow in coming wreckers turned up uh in particular a local smuggling gang by the surname uh, the leader was watson and uh, because the crew uh, were most of the crew were drunk they weren't interested in what was going on the officers and the passengers who were prominent people were boarded in hastings and the wreckers climbed on and took the remaining silver after breaking into clump's cabin now the mayor of hastings turned around and said right for every ingot that was taken i'll give you two guineas most of the ingot, silver ingots were returned because obviously you, the dilemma that you've got is then selling the stuff on without too many questions being asked but not all of it because it turns out this gang uh, were uh, were connected to uh, france and holland for smuggling and i believe it's quite possible that they moved the silver over to uh, holland and it's quite possible that they bought contraband goods with it and of course in holland or france wherever they went they might have been melted down and turned into coins who knows uh, but most of the ingots were returned but some weren't so that leads to a very interesting story um so there we have the the um the beach to amsterdam um and of course as i mentioned already clump then uh, made for london by by the uh, a three-day stagecoach ride some of the crew that had died is a believed by popular belief especially on wikipedia and some websites that they died of yellow fever although that may have be possible we've got to understand that most of the crew joined exhausted and malnourished anyway and uh, it's believed i think there's a local church in balderide i haven't visited it yet myself uh, it, it, it's in a, a ruined state now. I think it's St. Mary's at Baldwin, but again, please do correct me where a lot of the Dutch bodies were uh, buried uh, from death. Um, but a lot of the crew were repatriated to Holland sometime later anyway, with Clump making for London anyone that, on the three day stagecoach ride to go and meet the uh, VOC representative uh down there so um they then returned to the ship um and they burnt the forecastle deck the poop deck of the quarter deck 
try and get access to the hold it was unsuccessful because the wood was too, so well engineered and built they didn't get anywhere with it but they just destroyed the the uh, the deck so the amsterdam was left for a considerable amount of time and it eventually sunk uh, into the, the sand and mud and the sea then started to cover it uh, the victorians would visit it and cut pieces of wood off of it as souvenirs but it was never interfered with until the late 60s and, and, and 80s the 60s excavation was slightly clumsy and uh, they used a digger to go around it and see what they could find with the ship they found things like boxes of or sea chests of, of um, uh, wooden clay pipes that have been dumped overboard they reckon and some things are found on the seabed nearby um, but it turns out the beach is actually getting lower and lower so one day maybe in a thousand years time that the, the the Amsterdam will be a bit more visible and who knows all of it might be visible but it was Marsden in the early 80s that led a proper professional under financed excavation uh, of, of the Amsterdam and it's now that I will turn to the slides and photos that, that I've taken out of the book and some of them are my own as well um, so let's let's just have a little look have a quick slurp of the bruise if you bear with me I've done a lot of talking so if we have a look you're probably wondering as a lot of people do we need my glasses for this so bear with me um there we go right that's better okay let's have a look here you're probably wondering what the what the amsterdam actually looked like in its complete form before um it's very distressed look let's, let's get this slide up here now okay should look something like this there i am you'll just see this just it's just being uploaded bear with me there we go that's what she looked like from the back um gotta say what a handsome ship look at all the, the i draw your attention there to the the back artwork there look at it absolutely gorgeous an absolute statement if you were to see that on the high seas i haven't got a picture of the front but i believe at the bow spirit which is the the, the mast at an angle that comes out the front here i don't know if the cursor is showing up on this um there would there would be a lion's head but she carried uh something like uh, was it 40 guns so 40 odd guns Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. Okay, well, look, there, 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 that gives you a great picture there of uh, what she what she would have looked like in all her glory. That's actually the the replica ship in Amsterdam itself. So there we go. Um, Forty guns. I think it probably had more. Um, yeah, that the back. Look at the the ornate the decoration of it absolutely beautiful you can see at the top there there's some decoration in red i can't quite make that out but hopefully i might get out there one day and to amsterdam maybe next summer uh, and actually look at the replica but she's totally gorgeous i'm sure you'll agree a massive ship look at that uh, very imposing uh, to say the least um okay let's just get rid respectfully get rid of her there we go <laughs> she's great in it live <laughs> there we are then you, you're back to me <laughs> uh yeah great uh, a fantastic very majestic looking ship uh I, I you know gorgeous totally gorgeous amazing they haven't made a film about it really quite tragic don't let Hollywood get hold of it, though, please. Um, okay, now when when they uh, when Marsden excavated the ship, I mean, a lot of the cargo 
it's worth mentioning is still down there in the hold and when they when when he got a hatch to it i think they 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 have they fixed a metal hatch to it and what they did when they got in there they bulked it out with uh, sandbags but they got some of the cargo out a lot of it is um it is it, still down there some of the silver because what the crew did they did their own private trading which the company turned a blind eye to so they would take their own money that they'd raised borrowed uh in clumps um case he borrowed money uh so he owed money uh, by the time he got back to amsterdam uh to to his creditors that he, he was hoping to use to trade privately uh on a successful trip but of course this trip wasn't successful so he'd gone back to amsterdam as a 33 year old with a young family as well and owed creditors money and, and by the way wilhelm Klump went on to a very successful career as a captain uh well into his 60s despite this happening the company found him not guilty of any uh, wrongdoing or liability he, they they said that he acted um in, in in with professionalism and did the best he could in some very difficult circumstances but anyway turning, turning back to the excavation a lot of the items are down in Hastings Shipwreck Museum and Hastings Museum. Uh, again, hoping to get there, maybe do a bit of a vlog and some coverage with that. Um, but uh, one, of the, one of the things I took from the book that they found, which I was really impressed with, uh, is the... Let's have a look here. There we go. Is, is a pair of cufflinks just coming up on the screen now stroke of luck there we go it's coming up now you should see that actually my better half actually made some replicas of these out of some old buttons we found quite lucky really uh these were these just waiting for them to upload there we go that's, a, that's straight out of the book by Peter Marsden. You can see uh, that, that, that basically, yeah, they're that, that, that buttons uh, with a shank or a link. You could have put a chain through there, linking them up. Some pictures, I'm not quite sure who the pictures are, uh, but I, I've done some separate research and uh, it could have been of a loved one or um, uh something you believed in or or or, or whatever i mean um, i don't know who that is but uh, officers certainly would have worn them and that was excavated up by uh peter marsden's expedition out there um so that gives you an idea what they found i mean there's lots of bottles red wine was found uh gin was found uh there's all sorts of tobacco boxes these ornate tobacco boxes were actually to die for cannons have been salvaged although i believe some of the barrels have gone missing a lot of the stuff is what is down at the shipwreck museum in hastings so uh I'll, I'll try and get down there and have a look see as to what and get back to you guys online and uh we'll, we'll see I, I have got photos somewhere but i'd rather redo it and, and uh get, give you an idea uh scale because what the amsterdam did it gave us an idea of what life was like in 1749 so um yeah that's that's it's a, a bit of a snapshot if you like of um um what they found um big shout out there to uh, reavers gallows and the privates privateers defeat even with the background music uh, okay let's have a look here what else have i got i've got some more slides look we've had the cufflinks let's have a look what's this Yeah, hold on. It's just up. The picture's just um, uploading. Got here. Uh, right. Okay. 
drag this to the stream. Oh, there we go. It's coming up now. Okay. Told you it was live. <laughs> it's good fun. It's good fun. Um, right. There we go. You should see what the, the image will prompt my commentary. You see, I take these, I take these photographs, make these slides. I put something like Amsterdam VOC cufflinks. I know what it is. I put something here and I can't, I can't see it because the title's too long. But um, there we go. Let's see what comes up. Ah, there we go. Um, it's the plans. It's it's a very useful cross section, and um, I'll blow this up myself. I can take you through it. Um, if you can zoom in, um, would would be great. So you see down the bottom diagram, you you can uh, you can make out if the, if the beach is cut away. There we go. The beach is cut away there to the left and right you can see a line beach level so if you just use an imaginary line to cut across the forecastle gun ports quarter deck poop deck it gives you an idea of what's left the structures that are poking through the bulkheads if you like that are poking through so all of that down there into the hold is still remaining so there you are there i think that's an important reference is the is the uh, beach level right there um so that's what you can actually stand if you if you now if you go down to the beach be very careful go with someone or let someone know you're going um take a mobile phone with you and look out for dog walkers that's a good sign i think uh if they're walking along the, the shoreline if you're going to visit the wreck that is um, be careful because the sand's very soft and you will sink. After all, the, the, the ship sunk, you will sink. Uh, I've, I've been to talking to, to some reliable locals about it and they've told me some of their experiences, which would be quite frightening for some people. So be very careful when you do go down there. I'd recommend going with a guided tour, or, or, but at least take someone with you, please. And if you get you keep keep moving your feet uh, if i were you um because you'll be dictated to by the tide as well keep around the front of the structure so you're nearest the the shingle and the sand but anyway look there there there's the beach level so that gives you a cross section across there and and the eight foot ten foot uh, uh measurement starts there all the way down to the the, the, the cross lines at the bottom that gives you an idea of what's uh, under there. And it's bulked out, by the way, with sandbags into the hole to stop the whole thing crushing in because uh, Marsden described it as pretty much being intact, although he just ran out of time funding and the, and the tides. Um, so he couldn't get to, the, to everything, but a lot of it is still down there. The top diagram is like an aerial view uh, that gives you an idea of where the hatch is. Uh, and a layout of of everything from the top um, hole in that they made at the bow there, the bow being the front, that would be the beach where it is. Um, and it's worth mentioning as well that the vessel, if you look towards the stern, which is the back, um, the, bo the, 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 the stern at the bottom here, I hope the cursor is coming up, that's where it's sunk at an 18 degree list at the back. So if you fully appreciate how it sunk as well, uh, a, a terrific picture. It, it said it spoke a thousand things to me when I saw that in the book. Um, so we'll enter, exit the full screen. Hopefully I'll bring myself back into this somehow. Um, let's have a look here, play around with this now. Oh, there we go. I think it's coming back now. Hopefully, <laughs> it was important to blow that up because um, give, give you an appreciation. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, there we're back on. Um, yeah, it, 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 that alone to me as a shipwreck speaks a million words, tells me so much um, information. I'll just remove that from stream. I have got one more to show you. Um, Okay, let's, let's just find it. This is the actual wreck. Now, I, I've never seen it 
in this state because um, as i say you're very reliant on the tides of the voc not the tides of the voc to see the the, the amsterdam voc um so when i when i've been down i've been down there twice and uh you get some some structure uh coming out at a low tide, but you need a, a real low low tide uh, to see everything now i'm just uploading a picture that should come up on the stream very soon of what it looks like it, it warts and all if you like uh and when you're actually down there fully appreciate how big it is there she is uh, in all her current glory absolutely massive it is a beast i have to say 1100 tons of her when she was originally built skillfully beached onto uh, balderith beach i have to say um it still does have a skeleton in it by the way um and it's this cabin boy and they can't work out why he was so uh, far down into the ship the ship uh, his name is adrian well geveren he was a cabin boy um or one of the cabin boys that was uh, commissioned on the ship um and uh, there he is that's his name he he he, uh, he, he part of his uh, i say bodies part of his skeleton has been recovered the legs but the, the upper half the torso half is still down there um so really it, it is an official grave uh and of course the interesting thing is all these uh people the crew the passengers the officers um the, the to, in, in terms of today their families are still notified of their property and where their ancestors are buried or kept um which is interesting isn't it and because they have because they have to put it uh, i think i believe they had to put it through lloyds of london at the time for a year for uh, their, their relatives to come and claim their belongings and their probably what would be their inheritance uh, and property uh, but there 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 is the amsterdam in all its glory you can see what i mean about the muddy sand in in the beach it, it's i believe the the, the wreck does qualify under the shipwrecks act of 1973 excuse me done a lot of talking that's it's a protected site uh, and i believe it's owned i think by the british government um i think so to, to vandalize it wreck it uh, would be uh, you'd be breaking the law um and if you've got any daft ideas about trying to recover the treasure you've got no chance the well, treasure the cargo that's down there you've got no chance uh just be respectful of it uh and um it, it, it potentially could be a dangerous site as i've already said so be very careful down there you are messing about with still the sea um so there's there's the wreck um and you can see a lot of the structure that, that sh that's the complete structure of it what's left at the surface oh, i've never seen it like that i've only seen partial structure on a low tide um but yeah that that's the uh amsterdam uh let's just remove that the picture there ah i'm back again there we go um but um yeah great stuff look um thanks very much uh for taking the time to tune into this it does mean a lot um lots of shout outs to all of you uh, on the channel and the people that read the blog thank you very much um this has been uh as i say another part of the uh coverage of the Amsterdam voc um so i believe this is what part three i think now it's been brilliant doing this um I will revisit the wreck and i'll get onto the museums and i want to go and see the uh, replica ship uh in amsterdam uh, something that really interests me um so let's just take this down okay hide that so please uh, like comment and subscribe uh 
to the channel, share the videos, please look it out there. Um, so, yeah, well, thanks for watching. Um, and I'll keep you by the way. We're going to be reading the cows, a bit of music, a bit of the content, as you might say. And uh, take myself off the screen. And uh, I hope we get to you again live. But playing the old Hastings strip. And uh, might even be in the Crime Museum, so I don't know. Um, so there we go. Uh, send me out of it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. More Facebook. Come and find me. Uh, you've been watching the Sussex Smuggler. I'm Captain James Bollinger. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Take care. And uh, hopefully see you.